Helmut Kohl, the Chancellor of Reunification, being celebrated at his last major public appearance. The former German leader was honored alongside his Russian and U.S. contemporaries, Mikhail Gorbachev and George Bush Sr., the men credited with ending the Cold War. Back then, Chancellor Kohl was in charge of a key turning point for both Germany and Europe, a moment etched deep into his legacy. I have every reason to be proud, despite all other trouble and hassle. There's nothing that I can be more proud of than German reunification. While Helmut Kohl has been faded on the international stage, at home he remains a divisive figure. Critics view his political career as a lesson in how power corrupts. Kohl's ambition and drive were visible from early in his career. He became a rising star in West German politics as the country's youngest state premier and the youngest Christian Democrat party leader. But he still wanted more. I want to win the election and become chancellor. He didn't have to wait long. In 1982, he replaced Helmut Schmidt as West Germany's new leader. In the capital, Bonn, he set about establishing his notorious coal system, a sprawling network of confidants and informants telling him about the mood in his party. Those who played the system got key posts. One of them was Elmar Broek, a close ally of Kohl, his man for Europe. He gave you the impression you were being included in the decision-making. It was only later you'd realize that you were just an instrument in his hands. He was very adept at manipulating his political followers and utilizing them for his own ends. Cole drew part of his authority from his ability to listen to both supporters and opponents. He was open to other opinions, but only when they didn't diverge too far from his own. He'd grab the telephone himself and make himself very clear. And he could get pretty loud. But I had the impression that as long as he was shouting at me, I wasn't completely out of favor. By the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, there were no challengers to Helmut Kohl and the political machinery he had created. While Germany celebrated, he was focusing on one big goal, uniting East and West Germany. It would be his political masterstroke, built upon a strong partnership with the United States. He quickly won over President Bush with his 10-point plan, mapping out the steps toward a unified Germany. A key factor in Kohl's success was his unconditional commitment to European integration. He allayed France's fears of a resurgence in German nationalism, and he approached other European powers as equal partners. In February 1990, he also got the green light from Moscow. With the approval of East Germany's Soviet masters, fell the final hurdle to reunification and sealed Helmut Kohl's crowning achievement. Do you have something to drink? I want to propose a toast. This is a day, flying back from Moscow, that we'll remember. It's a great day for me and hopefully for you too. To Germany. In situations like that, I never sensed a triumphant feeling from Helmut Kohl. It was always a tremendous feeling of gratitude. Of course, he was also proud of what he achieved. But even after German reunification, the country remained divided by Kohl's domestic policies. They were typified by a hands-off approach, sitting problems out in the hope that they'd resolve themselves. There were angry street protests. The Kohl era polarized an entire generation. 
For me, coal was stagnation. He symbolized a country standing still, a country with no impetus, and a country which wasn't modern. By 1998, Kohl's aura as a chancellor was all but gone, and his government was voted out of office. His reputation suffered its biggest blow a year later with the CDU's finance scandal and revelations of illegal slush funds. Until today, Cole refuses to name the donors of the secret funds. The CDU distanced themselves from the former chancellor. He was forced to resign his position as honorary chairman. But Helmut Kohl's political legacy lives on. Stepping into his mantle as political power broker is his former protege and Germany's present chancellor, Angela Merkel. Helmut Kohl's position in German politics remains controversial, but as the man himself says, history will be the final judge.